To support this podcast, go to positivesarcasm.com slash donate. Any amount is appreciated. Once again, positivesarcasm.com slash donate. Donate as little as a dollar. Thank you and enjoy the program. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by PB and Joey. Simple, honest, and delicious. Go to pbandjoey.com for more information and check out the trail mix. $35 or more gets you free shipping. That's pbandjoey.com for more information. pbandjoey.com. Jay here, PositiveSarcasm.com, recorded here at the Spare Parts Studio. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Just me, I haven't gotten any sleep, but that's okay. Uh, but you, nobody, none of the executives at TikTok have gotten any TikTok. 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 Speaking of TikTok, you can find me on there at Positive Sarcasm for now until they ban it, or Microsoft buys it. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook.com slash POS Sarcasm, or if you just want to be my friend there, you can go to Facebook.com slash Positive Sarcasm. And you can find me on Instagram, the, ooh, the evil Instagram, uh, at positive underscore sarcasm. How's everybody doing? Hope you're all doing well. Yes, they're working on a new stimulus package up there on Capitol Hill. Uh, it's funny is we preach all these wonderful things, or at least I try to. I preach all these things about what would, if you were a smart person, if you were a emotionally stable person or a person who understood what to do with your money, you would, you would, uh, you know, if, if you were a person of sound mind and body, you would do the right thing if you were handed a check for 1200 bucks, or if you had proper unemployment or if you had any common sense, if you were to, if you needed to lose weight or do anything, you would do the right thing. I'm just, I'm hoping people would do the right thing. And I have to, every day I have to realize to myself that people are idiots. People never do the right thing. They're always blaming everybody else for their own problems. They're just trying to justify their own morbid existence. And I just, I have to come to the realization that a lot of the times people are useless or they're going out of their way to get in your way. And I just, I don't know. It's, that's the mindset I'm getting is that people, I, I have to understand that a, a person, a person is, I, I normally go, okay, a person is smart. A person is capable. A person is motivated. Uh, and then they get mixed up with people and then people pretty much just drain them of all their motivation. Because normally when you're on your own and you have no support group, you have to come up with, you have to, your brain has to create hormones that tell you you have to survive. But when you're around people, people kind of take that motivation away from you. They kind of uh, kill those, kill that, that drive of hormones throughout your body. But when you're on your own, you have to find ways of entertaining yourself, keeping yourself motivated, uh, keeping yourself funded and educate and just it's it's all on you so being uh at home and through this whole time of you know stay at home orders and covid and not going out to restaurants and doing all that stuff you kind of it's like all right well how do you what's your where does your mind shift where does your your mindset shift to does it shift to okay well i'm not going out here you're working you know if you're working at home or you're not working at all or you're furloughed or you're just spending less time out in general how does your mind shift like do you shift to the point where i'm going to save money i'm going to do this and i'm going to pay down that and i'm going to focus on if the shit really does hit the fan well what do i i i am set i don't have as much to worry about or does your mind shift to okay i'm at home i have i'm gonna go instead of spending money at the mall because the mall is closed i'm gonna go online and spend all my money online and then that stimulus package, which is essentially, well, for now, free money. We'll, we'll pay for it in the end. Well, what are you going to do with that? Are you going to pay down some bills? Are you going to pay off your car? Are you going to pay down college loans? Are you going to pay down this, that, and the other thing? No, you're going to go and buy. I would assume that you would go and do something intelligent with it. But I would be wrong. I would be wrong in assuming that people are going to do smart things with that money no they're gonna do stupid stuff they're gonna do stupid stuff they're gonna come end up compiling more debt or not gonna be able to accrue anything of value that that purchase went towards they're not gonna put it into the stock market they're not gonna put it towards towards gold they're not gonna put it towards the savings they're not going to pay down debt uh it no it's gonna go towards something dumb and the, and that I have to realize that it's, I, I try to think on a level where I would assume 
P- uh, the pe- person I'm talking to is of high intelligence and they're doing the right things. But I just the more I realize that people do stupid shit, the what less I want to associate with them because I don't want them infecting my br- my brain with dumb ideas. So I I want to for the okay. I format this podcast for people who can understand my rambling, my incomplete thoughts, my concepts, my energy towards the subject. So I need to remember that when I talk, there are smart people that are listening, there are creative people that are listening, and then there are dumb people that are just looking for chunks of information that they can skew and use against me or just skew in general because they have something to complain about. So I just have to remember that there are people out there, there are listeners that use my information and be like, oh, that's pretty good. Oh, that's something I could dive in, a topic I can dive into. And then there are those who are just morons. And I just have to remember that, that I don't need to talk down. Like I need to stop talking down. People are idiots. I need to stop talking on this podcast like I'm talking to fucking idiots. And if I am, that's fine. I'm talking to them, not on purpose. My goal isn't to talk to you. You can just go away. I am exhausted by the fact that every time my head hits the pillow, I'm going to wake up and there are more idiots on this planet and that I'm afraid, I'm afraid that they're going to hear my, my, they're going to hear my, my podcast. They're going to hear my opinion. They're going to hear, uh, watch my videos or something. And it's going to be used against me. Because people are bitter, insecure, hateful little shitbags. Um, and this is not something I'm concerned about at all. Not right now, but always in the long term. In the long term, if I make, happen to make something out of this, What's gonna be? What's it gonna be ten years from now, or five years from now, or two years from now? So if I gain any notoriety, but I have to remember. I also have to remember that. So what? So what? I apologize for nothing. They can go fuck themselves. I'm just gonna keep. I need to not be afraid to be aggressive. I've done it before. I do it all the time in this podcast, but I always try to be like, okay, what's the goal here? What's my goal? My goal is to put out concepts, find the right information, and bring info and possibilities to people who want them, who want to be like, oh, well, okay, that's some useful information, and hone in on those people, and talk about subjects I find fascinating. To the rest of the morons, I don't care about what you think. I don't care about what you use against me. I'm not going to get scared. And that's it. I'm just, let's just go with it. Full speed ahead. And whatever happens, happens. Fuck it. We're not here very long on this planet. So what do I care if somebody gets pissed off? What do I care if somebody doesn't like me? You can't please everyone. You can't do it. And you know, nor why would you, why would you want to? Why would you want to? Just for the fact of coming from Jewish ancestry, there are already people that hate me. Okay, well, nothing you can do about that. Moving on. So why would I give a shit if they didn't like my opinion? I don't care. Fuck them. So my goal is to bring you knowledge, bring you information, introduce concepts, make light of them, joke about them, but to introduce, as long as I'm still introducing topics of use, whether it's in a joking manner or in a serious manner, I'm still introducing topics and information that you could possibly utilize to better your life or somebody else's. So let's run with it. So I'm obviously, uh, I'm always curious about health and wellness. There are three things of note uh, that I wanted to bring up this week. And one of them was specifically, uh, there was an article on Healthline. And I don't, the information always can be debated about what, is actually uh, what helps with cancer, what types of cancer. I always say a a low inflammation diet always helps with vast, like 90% of cancers. Because, well, because of the fact that glucose is a factor in cancer. But brain cancer is not so much. Brain tumors are a completely different beast. But 
I do want to, for the ladies at least, breast cancer is a major issue. Breast cancer, ovarian cancer, these are topics that women are, they go to their doctors, that's one of their major concerns. So I, I, there was an article on Healthline about if you were to eat, what foods should you eat and maybe a few to avoid. So for the ladies out there, ladies, let's go ahead and check out this Healthline article by Jillian Kubala and see what she has to say about breast cancer and diet and some of the things you should eat. And you guys know I'm a foodie. I love food. I like eating properly. And it definitely, it's helped me and others lose significant amounts of weight without losing energy and without starving. So let's go ahead and just dive into it and peruse through a few topics and definitely hit those points of uh, when it comes to the food items. So breast cancer, most common a cancer among women, uh, one out of every eight. And that's, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Uh, DNA damage, genetic mutations may cause this disease, inherent certain genes uh, also increase this risk. I believe smoking may also play a part. Lifestyle plays a political role. Heavy drinking, smoking, estrogen exposure. Uh, too much estrogen, which is an, a, a definitely a common issue among some women, um, is another not is another uh, marker. Dietary patterns, Western diets, basically the cheeseburger diet, uh, processed foods. So what do they? What does she recommend? And I'm just gonna put these out there, and maybe we'll see if they kind of agree with my way of thinking and maybe there's more information to look into now leafy green vegetables is number one so they she marks kale arugula spinach mustard greens and shards foods that are de uh, nutrient dense spinach arugula is one of my favorite vegetables mostly because you don't cook it you roll it in tuna you place it on top of a pizza you put it in your salad uh, or you just place it on top of your food as a major, as like a huge garnish. But it's kind of, it's got a s distinct flavor. It's kind of spicy in its own right. Um, and it's delicious. It's crunchy, oddly enough, for a, for a leafy green, but it is very, very good. Um, and that, so, and then of course, on top of that, kale. Kale is also very nutrient dense as well. Very good for the body. Two of my l most, Spinach is kind of in the distance. I would prefer arugula and kale. Now, anytime you have uh, leafy green vegetables, it's a major part of your diet. You're going to do well. But it's she recommends kale, arugula, spinach, mustard greens, and shards. I think that's a t that's an excellent that is an excellent way to uh, to get started as far as greens. I eat a lot of greens, and I think that's a great way to go. Uh, also, if you want to include uh, what do you call it? Foods that are heavy in like sulforaphane or like, you know, cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, broccoli rub, bro uh, broccoli sprouts, uh, just regular broccoli florets. Definitely go ahead and add those to your diet as well. Uh, let's see. What else? So leafy greens, they contain, she says they contain certain antioxidants like beta carotene, lutein, higher blood levels, which are associated with reduced breast cancer risk. Uh, they had a study. There is a study and all the links are on it uh, on this one. Uh, let's see. Eight studies and over 7,000 people found that women with higher levels of carotenoids have a significantly reduced risk of breast cancer compared with women lower levels. Uh, there was another study of follow-up, 18 to 20% reduced risk of breast cancer as well as reduced recurrence and death in those who already had breast cancer. So before you get it and after you get it. Uh, also research high intake of folate, a B vitamin concentrated in green leafy vegetables may protect, may but it doesn't hurt. Folate is not a bad one to have in the body. Citrus fruits, absolutely. Vitamin C is an absolute go-to when it goes to reduce risk in any type of cancer. And just overall health and wellness and, and reduce reduction of uh, being sick, you know, symptoms in general. It simply states that citrus fruits, uh, compounds that may protect against breast cancer, also including folate and vitamin C. Vitamin C, you can take like 10 to 15,000 milligrams if you wanted. I don't know if you want to be doing that on a full-time basis, but I generally recommend anywhere between four and 5,000 milligrams a day of vitamin C. That's what I take in. I highly recommend. Uh, right now, I'm on the lower side. I'm more like 2,000 right now, but I would think like 5,000 would be good. If you team that up with like vitamin, like 5,000 milligrams of vitamin C, 4,000 to 5,000 uh, I use of uh what do you call it vitamin d and then also potassium and magnesium uh together 
those four vitamins right there, I think you'd be in good shape. You would be in good shape. You could take it before you go to bed. There's a uh, there's an actual method on how you should take them. I just take all my pills before I go to bed when my body's hopefully recharging and basically just trying to get rest. Hopefully that is the best time. I don't like taking p- pills on an empty stomach unless it's like I take one in the morning with my coffee and that's it. So they also contain beta carotene, flavonoid antioxidants like quercetin. Quercetin is becoming a hotter topic because it's an it's it's got anti-inflammatory properties. It's an antioxidant, excuse me. Uh, nutrients provide antioxidants, anti-cancer, and anti-inflammatory effects. Citrus fruit reduced risk of many cancers, including breast cancer. Six studies, over 8,000 people, linked high citrus intake to a 10% reduction in breast cancer risks. Now, uh, I, this doesn't mean like drink orange juice. Orange juice is loaded with sugar. But things like vitamin C, so basically, oh, things like, excuse me, lemon water. So basically just taking like a bunch of wa- lemons, chopping them up, throwing them in a the water, letting them sit for a day, and then drinking the lemon water. That's a great daily thing to, to uh, get in the habit of. There are, uh, you know, things like apples and l- oranges, just natural fruits in general that will give you energy throughout the day and give you some of those proper vitamins and nutrients. So uh, there's that. And also with those fruits, you're getting natural forms of fiber as well. You're, it's not going to work if you're doing orange juice. Fatty fish. Absolutely. Fatty fish like salmon, sardines, and mackerel. Uh, I know that a lot. there's this kind of a stigma around sardines when it comes to the Americans and their Western diet. Sardines are actually quite tasty. And you can eat good, first of all, you have to buy good sardines. Good sardines in a can, good ones. That are that are, you'll know the difference. If you buy a cheap can of sardines and like a reg, like a, a higher end or a more a proper can of sardines, there is a, a significant flavor difference. Like for example, you can eat one, but you can't eat the other. Like one's decent and one's disgusting. But it is at the end, it does actually just taste a lot like tuna. It just tastes like a saltier form of tuna. So you can mix it with mayo if you'd like. But <coughs> excuse me, I do like. Uh, sardines and they are heavy in uh, omega-3 so absolutely do it up but it also talks about mackerel mackerel is an oilier fish but delicious with garlic and oil and parsley and then of course salmon uh real salmon like atlantic salmon or you know pacific salmon but you know not farm raised uh so salmon sardines and mackerel impressive health benefits omega-3s selenium and other antioxidants that may offer cancer protective side of, uh, cancer protective effects let's see uh, large analysis in 26 studies over 800,000 people highest intake of seafood sources of omega-3s 14 percent reduced risk of breast cancer it's better than nothing let's see Berries. No, so also uh, a thing about balancing omega threes to omega omega sixes. Omega sixes are big in peanuts, and if you eat too much, if you have too much omega sixes, you're 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 gonna you're gonna get some inflammation going, which isn't good. That happens when people eat a lot of eggs too. If they don't eat the right amount, if they don't eat enough omega threes, omega sixes kind of take over, and you're gonna feel stiff. So make sure you are getting the proper amount of omega threes, so your body learns how to one process them. And two, you'll have, end up having less inflammation because of it. Now, berries, berries are obviously they have antioxidants as well. The ones that it includes, ber- just in general, berries, uh, strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, flavonoids, and blah, 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 protects against cellular damage. And then they had a study about 75,000 women linked to higher berry intake, blueberries in particular, blueberries, first of all. The taste, they're actually, you can actually taste blueberries. You ever find that when you buy blue, uh, like strawberries from the store, they never taste like anything? I don't know. Strawberries are kind of overrated. First of all, they're low in sugar. So, I mean, they're not very sweet. Blueberries, higher in sugar, but delicious. And let's see. And then particular, lower risk of estrogen receptor negative. Okay. Estrogen reception is big when you eat a lot of soy the increase of estrogen reception and then then you're in shit then you're in a lot of trouble uh but as far as uh blueberries in particular it just says notably a study in 75,000 women linked to higher berry intake and blueberries in particular to a lower risk of estrogen receptor negative breast cancer so there's another thing fermented foods uh it also says fermented foods like yogurt not the ones that are, have like 20 you can buy some yogurts they have like 38 grams of sugar in them but foods like uh like 
bet healthier yogurts, kimchi, kimchi I love, miso, and sauerkraut. Uh, I'm a big fan of kimchi, and I'm a big fan of sauerkraut. Kimchi I absolutely love. Uh, they contain, obviously, probiotics, which are good for overall digestive health and may protect, safeguard against breast cancer. 27 studies link fermented dairy products, such as yogurt and kefir, uh, to a reduced risk of breast cancer in both Western and Asian populations. Animal research suggests this protective effect is related to the immune-enhancing effects of certain probiotics. And, ooh, root vegetables. Allium, allium vegetables. This is good. So, let's see. Garlic, onions, leeks. Um, those types of vegetables boast of a array of nutrients, uh, compounds, flavonoid antioxidants, and vitamin C. Garlic is one of the best foods you could ever, ever eat. Onions, uh, I agree. Scallions as well. But what else does it say about that? A study in 660 women in Puerto Rico tied high garlic and onion intake to a reduced risk of breast cancer. Likewise, a study in 285 women found that high garlic and leek may per- leak. Le- leeks are tasty too. May protect against breast cancer. However, the study noted a positive association between high c- consumption of cooked onions and breast cancer. Also, an onion in general, yeah, that's an odd duck. But if you can, if you go ahead with like leeks or or scallions, they're not as carby. So take that into account. Also, garlic, garlic for anybody, dudes. You, you, it should be a high intake of garlic no matter what anyways. Let's see. And it just says simply that thus more research on onions is needed. Understandably so. So you can try things like, uh, like I said, scallions. Instead of just going full like yellow onion or sweet Vidalia onion, you can go with, see what, try leeks, scallions, and uh, what's the other one? Uh, what's the little guy? Forget what it's called. Garlic, onion. I forget what the little on- the little onion is called. Shallots. Shallots. Try those instead. Apples, pears, and peaches. Uh, these specific ones have been shown to safeguard against breast cancer. Study of 75,000. Those who consumed at least two servings of peaches a week had up to a 41% reduced uh, risk of developing ER breast cancer. A test tube study revealed that poly- polyphenol antioxidants from peaches inhibited the growth and spread of the breast cancer cell line. So, and I mentioned earlier, cruciferous, cruciferous vegetables. Number eight, cruciferous vegetables. Cauliflower, which is high in carbs, cabbage, and broccoli may lower, lower your reduce risk. May lower your risk of breast cancer. They contain uh, glucosaminate compounds, which can your body can convert into molecular molecules called uh, isothiocyanin. Dr. Rhonda Patrick has a bunch of information. You can YouTube her. She has a lot of information on cruciferous vegetables, and she also knows how to pronounce this shit. Significant anti-cancer potential. Study in 1,400 women linked higher total number of cruciferous vegetables with a reduced risk of cancer. Beans, leg- or legumes or legumes, however you pronounce them. Loaded with fiber, vitamins, and minerals. However, you have to be careful because they have a large, they are uh, high in carbohydrates. So just keep that in mind. But... Um, a little bit of garbanzo or great northerns or cannellinis in your diet is not a bad thing, especially if you're more plant based and you need those you need those carbohydrates to kind of move through your day because you have a high energy lifestyle. That wouldn't be a bad way to go. But if you're just sitting on your ass, mm, you may want to go another route. Herbs and spices: parsley, delish, rosemary, yum. Goes that'll go in your salmon. Oregano, thyme, turmeric. Turmeric is a must. Uh, put that in anything. Curry, ginger. I got these little ginger chews that I've been that I've been uh I've been tearing them up. They're delicious. Ginger is a huge one too. It's amazing for digestion, and you find it in a lot of teas nowadays. Uh, these compounds may help protect against breast cancer, vitamin, fatty acids, polyphenol, antioxidants. For example, oregano bo- boasts the antioxidants carvacrol and rosmarinic acid. You can tell I haven't gotten any sleep. Actually, it wouldn't matter anyways. Which test tube studies have found to exhibit significant anti-cancer effects uh, against breast cancer and cell lines. Curcumin, the main active compound in turmeric, uh, has also demonstrated significant anti-cancer properties and has well because it's an anti-inflammatory. So you want to give that a, you want to give that a whirl. All right, what you should avoid. All right, obvious alcohol, alcohol use, heavy drinking, or even moderate drinking significantly may increase your breast cancer risk. Fast food, avoid it altogether. I don't care what people tell you. It's the system, man. You can't afford to eat. Go to Taco Bell. 
fuck that person. They don't know what they're talking about. They're idiots. You can definitely afford to eat uh, shit from the grocery store that isn't processed. You just got to cook it. Uh, so fast food is associated with many downsides. Anytime it's processed, you're going to be in for a bad time. Fried foods, because of the fact that generally they're cooked in like vegetable or canola oils. So take that into account. Uh, if you're going to use oils, uh, I would highly recommend coconut oil. Uh, what is it? Extra virgin olive oil. And then uh, what's the other? what's the other one? Avocado oil. Use those primarily for any type of frying. Or butter. Butter's fine, too. Processed meats. Duh. Added sugar. Yeah. Anytime you're added sugar, you're going to be in for a bad time. Uh, and then, of course, refined carbohydrates. So anything that reduces breast, they all uh, increase your inflammation. Anything that re- increases inflammation, unless you're working out and you need post-workout carbohydrates or something to kind of keep the, the, the blood in the muscles so that it repairs itself quicker, that's different. But And if you're not doing anything, if you have more of a sedentary lifestyle, which I don't recommend, refined carbohydrates, added sugar, processed meats, fried foods, fast foods, or alcohol afterwards, yeah, you're fucksville. Um, try replacing, it's, she recommends try replacing refined carbs like white bread and sugary baked goods with whole grain products and nutrient dense veggies. Uh, the whole grain, ve- the whole grain is really kind of like a fad thing. You just want to avoid that altogether. It's kind of purposeless. Like at the end of the day, a carb is a carb is a carb and it just, it, you're not going to go anywhere. But if you do need those carbs or those breads, uh, sparingly is what I recommend. So there's, those are some things to take into account. So ladies, there are a lot of considerations for what you can do to better your lifestyle. There are other ones too. And reduce, because at the end of the day, we want, we want you healthy. We do. We want you ladies healthy. There's a couple other things you can do. Regular exercise, proper rest, smoking, uh, antiperspirants that you may or may not use. I stopped using antiper, uh, well, did I stop using anti, yes. I actually stopped using antiperspirants altogether. So I'll use like natural deodorants and things like that. Granted, they don't last as long and you have to use them like twice or three times a day. But that's the thing. You're not getting as, me- as much of those metals, those um, um, what aluminum dioxides or whatever. So that shit's not going into your body. Your body's naturally sweating. So that's one thing. I don't use them anymore. Uh, what else? Pesticides, Avi. And natural skin care, gardening, cleaning products. So, And then plastics, I think, was involved here too. Yeah, it wasn't. All right, whatever. Bottom line. So, all right. So there's a lot here. I, I want you to, it's healthline.com slash nutrition, and then look up breast cancer. And the article was written by, hold on, let me just look up the information. It's a good article. There's, it's a good guideline for how you should, uh, if you're going to actually start like a, a, your normal nutrition factors or your normal, your normal, normal nutrition baseline, there's a lot here that you can go on. And this isn't just for breast cancer. This, this, this benefits you in so many other ways other than just breast cancer. Uh, Julia, excuse me, Julia, Jillian Kubala. Uh, she's an MSRD, whatever that is. Uh, and it was reviewed by Grant Tinsley of PhD. So, I mean, whatever that means to you. But there's a lot here that, that has value. So keep that in mind. But it's Healthline dot com slash nutrition you can find that article there but yeah anything that's low information you should be better off what the fuck is going on here uh let's see i got a text message from who's that guy i don't care about that symposium and it's a lot of the market's going crazy right now because a lot of um earnings are coming down the pike for august and also the uh, stock market is expecting the the uh, covid19 phase two uh relief fund to be released later this week so there's that. There, there's, there's that to look forward to, which is nice. Uh, all right. So what do I want to do too? I find that um, my stress levels have also gone up by the fact that I drink coffee, and in the morning I start my day off on an empty stomach because one, I, I, what do you call it? I try to fast for at least twelve hours, and then I have a little bit of coffee. I, I drink far less coffee than I used to. Like I would drink like a whole. French press of coffee, but now I drink like small, like six ounce, two six ounce portions in the morning. So that's, that's it. But I'm drinking it on an empty stomach, which is 
not the best thing to do. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. My diet isn't perfect simply because, number one, my sleeping is off, and number two, uh, drinking coffee in the morning on an empty stomach. But, I mean, I don't smoke. I don't drink a lot of booze. Actually, I really don't drink. I, every few weeks, I'll maybe have an alcoholic beverage, and then I won't have anything for, like, months. But on top of that, I don't really do anything else. But uh, drinking coffee on an empty stomach, I wanted to bring it up. It says that it can, if you're prone to acid reflux, like, I did have a client who would... Th- for I mean, would drink so much coffee and wouldn't eat. Well, she would start producing a lot of acid in her stomach, and she'd start throwing up a lot. This also happened with uh, former UFC fighter Brendan Schaub. So these are things to take into account that drinking a lot of coffee and not having a lot of food produces a lot of acid in your stomach, producing a lot of acid reflux. This is bad news, Goose, and you really should consider uh, cutting back or taking a break from coffee altogether in order for your stomach lining, your stomach in general, to actually just recover and get back to baseline. And then you can reintroduce coffee as long as you have a good diet on top of that. Once you have the good diet going, your gut biome and your stomach is kind of back to base, and then you can start slowly introducing coffee again. So those are some things to take into account. I need water. Those are some things to consider. But, I mean, drinking coffee... Drinking coffee right in the beginning of the day can kind of get you going, but there are some risks involved because you're, you. I mean, in a perfect world, which believe me, this isn't, you'd want to wake up when the sun comes up, do a little stretching, uh, maybe have a little breakfast and then some coffee and kind of naturally go off, start your day. Well, that's not life. Life is you get up at fucking four thirty, five o'clock in the morning, you you know, go through your go through your motions in the morning, you drink coffee, you get your energy, and then you get right after it. There's no relaxing yet at this time. The grind never stops. However, there's a lot of things you can do during the day as far as your nutrition and things like that, before you go to bed, taking proper supplementation, getting the right amount of sleep so that you are prepared for the hellfire that is the next day. But drinking too much coffee in the morning, yeah, I don't recommend it. I definitely don't recommend it. Uh, There are days where you definitely can do it, but coffee's only going to do so much. And definitely taking a break from... I haven't taken a break from coffee in forever, I think. Like, uh, afternoon coffees are, are far, far less, and then my morning intake is far, far less. But if you have a little bit to... uh, Your cortisol levels are high in the morning. Your stress level's high in the morning. Because you're just getting up, your body's kind of trying to get its shit together. It's kind of rebooting. I don't care, you know, you as a person could look like your Windows 10 or the latest uh, Apple iOS, but fucking, let's face it, we're all Windows 95 when it comes to 6 o'clock in the morning. We're all slow boots. So, coffee in the morning like that, I mean, it'll help get you started, but... There, there, there are ways that you can possibly either take less or maybe insert tea every now and then or change it. There are ways, but we're all different. We're all very different, but I, I do it because I'm still, when I'm drinking my coffee, I'm chilling out, I'm reviewing, I'm just sitting still. I'm not running around like a maniac. I'm just, I'm right in my spot reviewing news articles and sending out information. But my mornings have been getting a little more stressful and I need to, I, need to taper back. I go for a walk the first thing after a shower. I go for a walk in the morning and then I'll sit back and have my coffee. But I feel like my mornings have been getting a little more stressful and I need to figure out what the fuck to do about softening that. Because I, I lately I've been far more aggressive. I've been angrier. I, I And I need to address that in order for me to be better. And I think it's just the fact that right now I, I look at the world and I see a lot of stupid people and I think that's also impacting my judgment and my thought process. And I need to remember that in the end, at least for me, I think it's going to be okay. So thankfully my coffee intake hasn't increased, but my sleep needs to go back to normal or I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. Sleep is everything, especially for me. So we're at 35 minutes. Uh, I hope that that information about uh, caffeine in the morning and then breast cancer awareness uh, or breast cancer reduction is of use to you, especially ladies. 
So please, if you have questions or comments or you need help finding this article, just hit me up. Go to positivesarcasm.com. You can contact me there or just email me directly at uh, positivesarcasm at outlook.com so I, can rela- so I can just simply send you the links to the articles. That way you can get a better understanding of how you can build your diet and how you can build your lifestyle to having a healthier you. In the meantime, let's piss some people off by going to uh, the dig Q&As uh, and see if there are some problems that we can solve or, or make worse. So let's just go ahead and close up on some Q&As. Here's, what, here's the problems that are going on in people's lives right now. Am I a jerk for refusing to write two 250-word essays about why I want to attend my sister's wedding? So my sister is getting married next February. Destination wedding, no less. I have doubts whether this wedding is actually going to happen with the pandemic and everything, but she is totally set on moving forward. Anyways, because of the pandemic, her original venue has made her cut down on guests because they're cutting capacity by half. As a result, she's sending out re-invites that ask everyone to RSVP again. But in order to figure out who to invite and who to cut, she's asking all confirmed guests to submit two 250-word essays to two questions. The gist is that she'll use these essays to choose who can come or not based on people's enthusiasm. People who don't write the essays at all will be automatically disqualified. I just feel really insulted by all this. The questions aren't even pandemic related. It's broad topics like, why do you still want to celebrate this day with us? And what will attending our wedding mean to you specifically? So she's blatantly looking for people to kiss ass and tell her why they really want to go. Anyways, I told her in advance I'm not writing 500 words on why I need to attend her wedding, spend my own money on plane tickets slash hotels, and buy her a present. This has really rubbed her and my parents the wrong way. She said that to keep things fair, if I don't fill out the RSVP correctly, I won't be saved a spot. I said fine with me. Then my parents said that if I don't show up, I'm going to be in big fucking trouble with all of our relatives, so just write the essays. Am I the asshole if I say stubborn on this? Um, don't go to the wedding. Uh... Fuck your parents. Well, not fuck your parents, excuse me. I'll, I'll retract that. Fuck your parents' relatives. I don't give a shit. If, you know, it's their day. Congratulations. But if my sister said, you have to write an essay in order to go to my wedding or even be considered, I'm not going. I'm not fucking going. My objective in going to a wedding is keep my mouth shut and look good. That's my job. If I'm filming it, that's different. Although I have to admit at one recent wedding, I filmed it and <laughs> didn't keep my mouth shut. But hey, you know what? <gasps> Oops. But either case, um, I think that you should just not go. And you know what? You're not an asshole for not doing it. I think you're in the, I'm not going to say you're in the right, but you're, you're fine. You're not an asshole for like, fuck it. I don't want to write an essay. Spend your, spending your money and then going. It's like, what? That's dumb. If that, if that's the wedding she wants, then that's fine. It's her wedding. That's what she gets. But don't go. Save your money. This is a, this is a, you're in a world where a pandemic is, uh, still active and you need to secure your future. And that's the most important thing. So no, don't go. And that's that. And quite frankly, what do you care that your what your relatives think? And if you've if anybody's ever listened to this pod, this podcast, who gives a fuck what anybody thinks at all? I don't give a shit. Other people, it doesn't matter. It's your life. It's your choice. It's your time. You do with it as you please. Okay. So no, don't go to the wedding. You're not an asshole. And it's not that you're saying stubborn. It's just. You know, I didn't know you had to earn a spot back into the family. So fuck it, don't go. And yeah, it is a kiss ass move. So. No, you're cool, bro. You're cool, bro. All right. This these ones are getting complicated. Let's keep going though. Am I a bad person for financially supporting my needy nephew, but not my boyfriend's well-off children? My baby sister died by suicide after having a child. My nephew is being raised by my mother, who 
should have retired two years ago. I live in a different state and have been contributing monthly to my nephew's care, including setting aside money for college. My boyfriend, Alex, has three children from his first marriage, and they are all close in age. His ex has remarried. Alex and I have been talking about marriage, but the sticking point is the money I spend on my nephew. Alex pays child support, but I easily give more to my nephew than he does to all three kids. I also have more saved for college. Alex tells me I am favoring my nephew more and need to be fair to his kids. He takes it as a lack of commitment on my part to the role of stepmom. I feel like my back is against the wall. I love Alex's kids, but they have two sets of grandparents, three parents, and other relatives. My nephew functionally has me. The money I send pays the light bill. My boyfriend goes to the French tutors and horseback riding lessons. The situation isn't even close to fair. Alex makes more than me. It is tough to balance my bills, savings, and taking care of my family. Three other additional kids would put me in the red if Alex and I merged our retirement funds. I know Alex is pan- panicking because college costs are high, and all three kids are most likely to be going in college at the same time. But I don't think the answer is that I make up the difference. Does this make me a bad person? No. I, look, suicide is a hard thing on a family in general or on friends in general. It's another thing for a person who should have retired two years ago to have to pick up the slack to be a parent when they didn't expect to be and not be able to afford it. So the fact that you are helping out is a respectable thing to do. Now, the, res- the responsibility, I guess, if you were to not have a nephew to take care of, yeah, maybe you could help out a little bit with, the, with, the, with your fiancé's kids. But if he may, I mean, forget the fact that he makes a lot of money and there's two parents there and all, grandparents and all that other bullshit. You have a, you've decided that you have fiduciary responsibility to that nephew and you're going to see it through. So, you know what? I, I think that it's respectable. It's your choice. And I wouldn't... I personally would not tell you to deviate from that. Because apparently if you didn't do it, that kid would be fucksville. Now, obviously, if that kid eventually around 16 or 18 has to get a job or whatever, but that kid has to make it to 16 or 18. If that kid has no financial... Uh, you know, if the kid has no food on the table, no light on in the house, and no way of, no way of getting from zero. When you're at zero, it's hard to get to, from. When you're stuck at zero, it's hard to get to one. When you're at one, you can get to two. But when you're at zero and you've got nothing coming into the house, and you know your mother, first of all, your mother's gone. That's, you know, you're you're at. You may not be at one. You may be like at a half emotionally because you had that feeling that you've been abandoned. You have been, but it's, it's something that's hard to grasp. It's hard to understand, first of all, from my angle, but you're, you're, the kid's going to grow up knowing that eventually. And that's going to be hard to deal with. So, no, you're, I'm totally cool with the fact that your extra money, whatever you got scrapped up, is going towards helping out the nephew. And I hope that's not a sticking point moving forward. I think you should stick to your guns. His his responsibility, his, those are his kids. That's his responsibility. He should be in charge of taking care of it. College, you know my position on that. I don't give a shit. But as far as his kids, they've got two parents. They're, they're taken care of. You've got that nephew. That nephew has nothing. If you decide to take care of it, Cool. That's how it should be. And yeah, he is panicking. Uh, let's see. Should I tell my friend I'm worried that she actually believes that she is dating a ghost? I'm worried my friend actually believes she has been having sex with a ghost in quarantine. She went to college together. We went to college together, but have lived on opposite coasts for close to a decade. I'm quarantining with my partner. She's quarantining alone. Both our cities have been locked down since March. We've always been close but we've talked especially frequently during this time. Uh, Let's see. Because she lives far away from family and doesn't have a lot of close friends because of punishing work schedule. 
In a conversation in April or May, she mentioned to me that we she'd been, ooh, boy, masturbating while thinking of a man who lived in her apartment in the 1920s. I assumed she meant it as a fantasy, and we had a good laugh. She, in subsequent conversations, she named the man John, and she's been began referring to him when I mentioned things my partner has been doing, like her stories are complimentary. John said this, John did that, John is having a bad day. As her city slowly ends lockdown, she mentioned possibly seeing an old sex partner again, but said she's worried John might be, okay, your friend has been, all right, I'm going to stop right there. Your friend is obviously uh, losing it in quarantine. This is a common occurrence. When people are indoors for too long, people go insane. People go insane, and they have to get out of the house. They have to go on vacation. They need to start socializing again. They go fucking crazy, and this is what's happening with this person. There are some, and there, there are some states and some cities which, yeah, they're still in, like, lockdown. You really can't go out and do much or you're hiding behind a mask. And she's clearly, uh, her mind has weakened to the point, if it wasn't already weak, has weakened to the point where some, you know, a picture of somebody who's dead or somebody who's living in the apartment, she's starting to see that as reality. So you got to get her out of the house. Or some, she's got to get out of the house. Or I, I think that she's going to go slowly insane. But yeah, that that's an issue. I mean, she has to get... I mean, it mentions here... We talk on the phone. It's hard to read her expression when she mentions John. But at this point, I don't know much about him or it's a real man she's dating. Yeah, she's starting to hallucinate. It is becoming ridiculous. And she needs to actually find friends and not necessarily something somebody who isn't necessarily a person. Let's see. Okay. Why don't women appreciate my depth? (laughs) Most women, not all, that I choose to date are not accustomed to a man with this much depth or emotions. Oh my God, you fucking beta. Often don't know how to respond, haven't reflected on themselves, or I've gotten you just talked way too much for a guy. I do not see my emotions as handicap or as a handicap or negatively. I'm very self-aware, ask a lot of questions, confident, giving, and work on compassion and empathy daily. You're a pussy. Uh, I try to understand a woman's boundaries, but how she likes to receive love and what is the best way to communicate with her. But my choices and potential partners to date seem only want or go one, maybe two levels deep in conversation about emotional intelligence and self-awareness. About me, I'm an extrovert. I consider myself a loud bag of shit who has many close platonic female best friends. I swear I my wedding line and bachelor party with some amazing grooms I take pride in what I do. Tech project management, career yoga instructor, passion to connect and help others. So, small snippet of what I believe is my challenge to find depth, passion, and emotional intelligence with an, impa- with an imp- impatient. I want it now technological self-gratifying, unaware lack of true connection dating pool. You either get lost within the millions or she... La- Dude, you're... Help me reflect. Dude, you're fucking weird. You need to go work out. You need to go do... Go do some dude shit. This yoga instructor passion empathy bullshit is the is everything that's wrong with dudes right now. All right? Go ahead and... You want to freaking manscape and uh, 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 learn how to talk to broads? Yeah, go right the fuck ahead. But you're eventually... At the end of the day, you're a dude. Stop pretending to act like a chick... Chicks will always want alphas, and the ones that say that they don't are the ones you don't want to conversate or even interact with to begin with. Be a dude. Be a fucking dude, dude. Lift weights and look good. Go get a GQ magazine. Learn how to dress properly. Maybe grow some facial hair, but at the end of the day, look a, look like a dude, eat like a dude, be a fucking dude, and knock it off with this yoga instructor guru bullshit because it's an infection. It's an infection in dudes right now. It's far worse than fucking COVID-19. And it's quite frankly, it's one of the biggest problems of the country is men trying to be empathetic and, oh, I just, I just, I want to see what they like and what, it's not what chicks want. It isn't what chicks want. There are ways to make chicks happy. You cook them dinner, you give them back rubs, you give them a stabbing. There's, there's a lot of ways to do that. 
You can listen to what they have to say. You know what you how you listen to what women when they want to say something? They just say it. Women just say shit. Okay? You just got to listen to when they say it. Okay? Pick up, just keep a clean house, a clean, strong body, and a clean mind, but knock it off with this yoga instructor you guru bullshit because that's not going to help you with all these, quote, best friends. You need to basically stop talking to all of them. Stop talking to all of them. That's the best way. When you've been, when you have too many people in your friend zone or you're the person and you're in too many friend zones, you need to disconnect from all of them for like months. Go work out to eat a bunch of fucking creatine and red meat and then come back and start smashing bitches. Serious. I'm not going to be polite about this situation. You're a fucking vagina, dude. All right. So women don't want to make, they already have to maintain their own. They don't need to maintain you. All right. Women don't need a walking tampon. You just need to freaking go and be a dude and be respected as a dude. That's that's it. That's what that's what I got to say to you. You're acting like a fucking bitch, and I got no respect for you in your guru lifestyle. It's fucking useless. It, I'm I'm sorry. You you just you're doing you're going about this all the wrong way. Yeah, you're you're chatty. You're yeah. You talk you talk a lot. You don't do a lot. So stop talking and start doing. You need red meat. You really do. You read. You, you need red meat. That's what, that's what you need. Uh, are we done? Yeah, we're done. I'm fucking exhausted. I'm so sorry. I'm tired. All right? I'm tired. Market's been crazy this week. Uh, and it's just, ugh. I just, I just need to get rest. So until then, uh, you can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on TikTok. Uh, hopefully, if Microsoft buys it, you continue to find me on TikTok. You can subscribe to this podcast, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Tune in, iHeartRadio, uh, Spotify, uh, Podcast Addict, CastBox, anywhere where podcasts are available. All right, we're done here. I got I to gotta go. I got to go clean some shit up. I got to take a hot shower. And thank you for listening, watching, subscribing. I will talk to you all uh, after I get some sleep. Record to here from the Spare Parts Studio. This has been a positive sarcasm presentation. I'm going to bed. Bye.